Hello and welcome to Perfectly Paranormal, episode 29. My name's Anna Schmidt, and I'm here every week to share with you true paranormal encounters and information about devils, demons, and dark energy beings that no one else talks about. And today we're listening to what Dean has to say about disrupted work practices, demons, spirits, dangerously exposed electrical cables, and emotional and mental upheaval all contained within his workplace, in the historic grounds of an 11th century town in the UK. And how this detrimental energy affected the current building and the office workers and anyone else who entered the building on a daily basis. Hello, Dean. It is absolutely wonderful to be speaking with you again. Nice to be here. It's always a pleasure. Now, Dean is a wonderful friend of mine who lives in the UK. He recently asked me to do a property clearing for him. And he had such a profound before and after experience that I thought you would all be interesting in hearing what Dean had to say. Would you be able to give us a little bit of background history about the property where I did the clearing? Sure, yeah, of course, Anna. So, as you know, I contacted you and asked you to do a clearing at this property because it's a very, um, it's an old building. I mean, the town that this building's in goes back to 1130. So it's got a lot of history. And uh, this particular building, it's its always been a building. It's in the, the center of this historic town. I've looked in the records and as far as I can tell, there's always been a building on the site. It's been all sorts of things. It's been, it's been a, a, an inn, a pub. It's been a commercial building. When I first got to know the building, I suppose, you know, I would be sort of early, early teens. The building was owned by the family and um, it was in a bit of a rundown state, to be honest. I think it had been a workshop of some type. Somewhere, sir, somebody had repaired cars and and it was a little bit of wasteland right in the centre of this town. Over the years, you know, we developed it. We first started by redeveloping the ground floor section, which was would then look like a workshop. So we put a new roof on. We used to rent that out. And then a little bit later on, we decided that we would do more with it. So we put in for planning permission and we really went to town on it. We put a new double story building at the front and then we put an extra story on the lower workshop part of the building, completely revamped. And we turned it into retail units at the bottom and then offices up above. So basically, that, that, that's it. But it's been in this town. Um, I've looked at really early photographs, and, and it's, it's always been there. But the, one of the reasons that I called you in, because there was a, there was a story that was passed down to me um, through my father, that this building um, had been a place where somebody had committed suicide at some point. Some chap who used to repair cars there or used to have a workshop there, he'd hung himself in this building. And, you know, I always had that story, that vision, that story in my mind, right from say, when we first, I first came across the building all the way through. You know, so that, that basically is the history of the building itself. So was there, other than what you've mentioned about the possible suicide and possible spirit that may be present on the property, was there anything else energetically that made you yeah, feel yeah. when you walked into the building, when you're walking around the building, did you notice a difference in the way that you felt, the way that you thought? Oh, yeah. Were, were you able to function properly in the building and get the work done to the level that you needed to? I mean, that building itself, I mean, no, it's, there was all sorts of things. Our main entrance that we use uh, to, to get to our, we, we have an office. There's, there's five offices or suites above, and we occupy one of those. And our main entrance is actually around the back. There's a passage between what's now a pub one side and a pharmacy on the other side. And our passage is through there. And even walking through that passage, which actually goes onto this piece of land in front of this building, you know, I would open the back door and there's just this heavy, heavy energy. Straight away, you notice it as soon as you walk in. And then on the ground floor, we've got a little tea room and a toilet and everything. I'd make a drink in there. 
And I always used to, I just get a bit of a headache and like a draining feeling. And then I would go back up with my cup of tea and my coffee, back up the stairs to the to the office. But the general, just the general feel of the, of the whole, the whole building was just a draining. I couldn't concentrate in there. I mean, I, literally, I, I exaggerate. And I would, I would start a piece of work. I would sit in front of the computer. I'd start a piece of work. And this incredible tiredness had come over me. And I would find myself, you know, me, me hand on my head, sort of looking down, almost dozing off. And I had to fight to get myself to get back in the swing of things, get back looking up the work that I had to do. And this has been going on for years. I mean, we've occupied this particular office in this building for, I don't know, it must be 15 years, maybe more. And I can honestly say in different degrees, I've been affected by it. And, you know, we've, there's two of the people that work in the office. There's um, our office lady. She's worked for us since she left school. So she's worked for us a lot of years in di- different offices we- we've occupied. I've noticed she she's a real calm lady and everything. And she she's always on time to work. And she's one of these really lovely, reliable lady. But I noticed that she was never, never seemed sort of settled. She never sort of seemed herself. But, but yeah, the buildings have affected me. But it's only since I got to meet you and you've done these personal clearings for us and you've done house clearings for us. And I've got, I've got to understand the energetics of the world that we live in a bit more, that I started wondering whether there was a problem with the building. It was an interesting location to work on because I had to only focus on the second Mm. floor of a building in a historic site from the early 1100s, I think you said. 1130, went back to. And to tune in and just focus on that floor that belonged to you. Because if you, it, when energy clearers, if they open themselves up too much, you're going to pick up on all the paranormal beings, all the spirits from the whole vicinity of where you are working in a town. So I think the yeah. building that we worked on for you, there were some aspects on the ground floor that needed to be cleared. And often when you start doing work like this, because I'm looking at the report now, there was 260 spirits. (laughs) Well, that's what I was worried about. That's what when I first contacted you about this, knowing how you work and and knowing how involved you get with the clearings and everything. And uh, I was worried. I said to you at the time, I've got this job. It's at this where I work at this office building. But I'm so worried that once you get and tune into that building, that its history goes back so far that you'll end up pulling in all of these spirits from, I mean, the buildings next door are hundreds and hundreds of years old, right next door. You know, there's a tunnel opposite, across the road, there's a tunnel underneath the building that goes all the way to the church. And it was a, a place that the priest and they, they would hide in this tunnel and they would go to the church through this tunnel. So it's that much of a historic place. I was worried about you would be flooded, basically. You would be overcome with all of these spirits. So when you said to me that there'd been over 200 spirits, I I wasn't really surprised. No, and that is just within that actual building is what I asked management to focus on. Because as you know, like I just mentioned, if you open yourself up too far, you're going to get thousands and thousands and thousands. Mm. Old town, lots of traditional battles and all sorts of things that went on. Yeah, definitely diseases, things that sweep through towns that take the lives of a lot of people. And then, of course, there there are going Mm. to be spirits that will be present. But what was interesting was that the area that you worked in didn't have that much of a heavy issue because you were saying there was five businesses that occupy that floor that you own and you work within one of those (laughs) areas. So area number five was rather interesting. There were a lot of motions like rage, hostility, unworthy. Mm -hmm. And Dean didn't tell me what sort of businesses were occupying these other four areas. And I just knew by looking at the types of emotions is that it would have been a tax agents or an accountant. Yeah, that's right. A human resource area, it was it. somewhere that's dealing yeah, with yeah. people who are upset and not happy about <laughs> the tax what's bill. going on. Not happy about the tax bill. Yeah, it was it. There were accountants in that in that office next to us. 
And so, yeah, I can just imagine. In fact, I've seen people with huge boxes full of receipts and things. I hear them coming down the passageway. I look through our office window. It's like an internal corridor and I can see them come in and the buzz the door and you can tell by the way that they're talking and the sound and the, you know, the voice and they're not happy about something. They've got a bill to pay and they don't think they should pay it. And, and so, yeah, that, that, that didn't surprise me that you got that type of emotion in that office. Sorry, I'm just going to say, going further down the corridor, there were, uh, the next door to us, we've, we've got solicitors. And there it's, it's mainly, uh, uh, well, I would say they're sort of admin side of things. So they're dealing with all the day-to-day -day things of house conveyancing and wills and, and all the rest of it. And then quite often they'll come out, these, these people will come out into the corridor and they'll carry on their conversations about the problem that they've got with this, that and the other. And they're right next door to us. And then right at the end, the uh, one furthest away, number one, uh, we've got a, a physio. We've got two physios. And they're dealing with all sorts of people with injuries and back problems, mobility problems. And they're coming and going all day long, certain days of the week. You know, it's one appointment after another. So there's quite a lot of movement of people up there. So when you said that you'd found those type of energies in there, as I say, I, weren't, I wasn't surprised at all. No. And the land that was under number five was mm. rather interesting. There were quite a few of the very heavy demonic level energies. Now, I know I was only employed to clear the second floor of this historic building, but when energy is presenting itself to be cleared, because quite often you don't know what sort of path you are opening up when you open up these places. Yeah. You, you're yeah, literally, awesome. I just go in and I will work on what presents itself because we oh. can't control this. We simply cannot control this. As I'm working systematically through each of the five areas on that second floor, when I got to area five, within the land under area five, there was large episodes of emotions such as distress and suffering, helplessness, mm. blame, sadness, sorrow. And what I saw in my mind was women in old clothing. Like they lo it looked like maybe a factory or they were dressed as in someone who would be in a workhouse or possibly even a brothel, like in the early days. Mm -hmm. Now, the imprints that I yeah. mentioned earlier, the distress and the suffering and helplessness and so on, I dated those back to approximately 350 years ago. Blimey. So that area could have been any of those things. It could have been a factory or a workhouse or a brothel. Could have been. It could have been an orphanage. But there were lots of female spirits in that area calming forth, mm. showing themselves. And who okay. knows, they've been there a long, long time just waiting for someone to acknowledge them and to give them the attention that they needed. Now, the spirits that were present there, they transitioned quite easily into the afterlife, which is wonderful for them, but also wonderful Gosh, for yeah. the building and the land. Because there mm. isn't that heavy burden of all those emotional imprints, all the trauma imprints that were present, and then the spirits that were still attached to them. Because what is attracted to the spirits and the energetic buildup is, of course, the yeah. lower vibrational beings, the dark and the demonic yeah, sure. beings, in numbers. Like There's never one of each of them. They're always yeah. in groups. Let me have a look. How many... So there were five demonic beings who were present in the land under Area 5 where the accountants work. And yeah. who knows whether the presence of those energy beings, the presence of the spirits, the presence of those emotional imprints didn't ramp up the behaviours and the actions Possibly, and the reactions. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I'd love to know. Obviously, I, I wouldn't want to involve anybody else, but I'd love to know whether it's more harmonious in that Office 5, Wendy, who works there in that Office 5, whether it, it's a calmer environment, a better environment to work and whether they're more productive. I'll bet they are. I'll bet everybody in that building, all those offices that I've described, I bet they're all benefiting from that clearing you did. Definitely. I don't, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I mean, that would explain, but something I'd, I haven't told you before is the... This, this unit, this retail unit, down below number five, 
which at, at the moment has been refurbished and it's ready to relet. But during its refurbishment, the people who, who actually occupied it before had employed a plumber and a joiner to put a new uh, disabled toilet in there, in the corner, ground floor, near to where I come into the building at the back. I've described it to him. And he was working in there and he mistakenly cut through a high voltage cable. He was wow. confused and he cut through a high voltage cable and lived. He cut through it with his electric saw thinking it was a waste pipe. And it was, I'm talking about two phase electric supply. And he didn't even, at that time, he didn't need to go to hospital. He went to hospital for a checkup later that day. And of course, the, the, kit, the power to the whole building was cut off. So the utility people came with a special team and they said they cannot believe that that chap is still alive. They said the times we go to similar incidents where somebody's cut through a high voltage cable and they're dead, too numerous to mention. They said it's a miracle that man's alive, but they said what made him cut through that pipe, I do not know. And he was working on the land. He had the floor exposed and his feet were on the soil on the land that you're talking about below number yep. five. Yep. So whether that was something to do with it, whether the energy down there confused him and he, he just simply made a mistake, you know, I don't I don't know, because nobody could understand why he cut into this pipe. It didn't make any sense. So maybe that was something to do with it, the, these, this energy, this demonic energy in the ground. Well, see, it could be, because people are very psychically open. Whether they want to announce it to the world or not, most people's bodies their energy fields, their minds will pick up on energetic changes around them. So working in a space like that could have caused brain fog, distraction, confusion. Yeah. Some people's physical bodies, like sometimes my heart, I'll get a pain in my heart that I don't have any heart issues medically and I'll know oh, there's something going on here energetically. Or I feel off balance on my feet because I'm very energetically sensitive. So I'm the perfect person to use as a guinea pig to be able to go places and mm. explain to people how the human body and our energy field can pick up on sensitivities, whether it be within homes, within sort of public places, within businesses. Yeah. But he may have very well picked up on the energy because I spent a lot of time crying, which happens quite often when I release a lot oh, of pain-type emotions, a lot of distress yeah. and despair and sorrow, it actually goes through the energy clearer. And as those spirits are transitioning off into the afterlife, quite often they need someone to release that heavy emotion for them. I don't know about all yeah. the emotions. I just know that when I do this sort of work, that I will experience sadness or sorrow or despair. And I just let it happen. I need to be that mm. because energy workers are the channeling point. People don't often realize that when you release the spirit off into the afterlife, they don't just go like whoosh, they're gone from the environment. They have to go through someone. They have to go through right what I call an energy point or a connection point or a transition yeah, point. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why when I do house clearings, the demonic beings go from the house to me and then they go from me either on into the afterlife to I the didn't realize space, that. or they go back right. out in the environment. They have to transition through something energy-based. Ah, I see. Yeah, I didn't realise that. I, no, I knew it, that. I knew it would obviously take it. I knew it would take a toll. It's got to take some emotional toll on the person who's doing the clearing. Um, but I didn't realise that's how it worked. Oh yeah, you feel it. Yeah. You believe me. If I'm working on a property that's got maybe ten, twenty, thirty demonic level beings on it, every time I clear a group of them, because I always travel in groups of either three, five, seven, or eight. That's usually what I find them in. They will come to me. I have to work out what they're attached to within myself because they're only energetic feeders. So they're simply moving from one food source to the next. They don't care who you are, what you look like, whether you're a cat, dog, chicken, whether you're a place or a person. They really just don't care. Yeah. You've got the food source that's there for them. So when I cleared right. the land of all those emotions and the building, they need mm. to move somewhere else. So I'm a little bit like bait. That's so how I explain it to people. Mm. Energy workers are bait. 
We kind of, I don't want to use the word capture because I still need to be respectful. We gather them within our personal space. And then I talk to them. I go, right, you've got these two options. You know, they go up or out, as I call it. And I usually choose to go back out into the human environment. Because we really? provide really? such a plethora of negative emotional imprints. Oh, you know, yeah. Why don't would we they want to go anywhere else? <laughs> yeah, don't we just? Yeah, all that's going on. I can imagine that. Some food sauce, that is. Yeah. So after we did the clearing, what are some of the things yeah. that you first noticed when you went to work, opened that door to enter, to go up the stairs to your office? Can you explain to our listeners what are some of the, the way you felt or what you experienced as you entered the building? Yeah, I went to work that next day after you'd done the clearing and me usual, I go to the, the door for a little pasty, put my little number in the keypad, open the door. Wow, <laughs> it was incredible, the difference. Up to that point, I knew it had a heavy, heavy energy, but I didn't realise just how heavy, heavy the energy was. When I walked in, it was light. It was airy. It was bright, even though the brightness hadn't changed. It was brighter than normal. It was just, it was lighter. It was cleaner. I opened the lobby door, went in, put the kettle on. It was almost overwhelming, the difference between the before and after. It really, it, honestly, I know, I know it sounds corny, but it, it just sort of literally took the breath away of the difference. I never realised before it was like walking through thick soup or something like that, like a swamp in a way. And now I was just moving easily through the space. You know, everything was just a whole lot brighter, lighter. That's the only way I can describe it. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's just how it was. And and then I went up the stairs, opened our office door. It just continued. It continued up the stairs. The whole building was sort of saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. You know, it was almost like it was putting up a, a little hooray. You know, uh, there was a, like a, a gratitude feeling from the building. And I was grateful for the building for releasing all of this, this energy that was been causing the problem. So I thought, right, I'm going to put this to the test. I feel fantastic now. Let's fire up some work. Let's just get some work out the drawer and let's have a look. Let's see if I'm any brighter, I'm any quicker, I'm, you know, I'm any more re responsive on the phone or anything. And yeah, what a difference. Got my work out on the computer. Things were just flowing. Things were flowing. Uh, and I don't mean that the, the amount of work was changing. And it was the same as it's always been. I just got things to do when I go in and I was speeding through them. And I was feeling alert. I just I didn't have that tiredness. I didn't have that drip. Usually, with it doesn't happen straight away when I get to work before before you do the clearing. It's a gradual thing that comes on. It's sort of like you get there and you're okay, and then it gradually slows you down, and then you start getting a little bit of a headache, and you think it's because I haven't drunk enough. So you go and get a glass of water, and after two glasses of water, you know better. Um, so, th but there was none of that. There was none of that, and. And it's, it, it was the same the next time I went in. And, and then I had to, of course, I had to email you just to let you know what a difference that you'd made to it. And that was the point. Do believe in what you do. And I don't really understand it, but I do believe in it. But when I experienced that at the office, the difference, that was the point when I moved from believing to knowing. That It's as simple as that. I just know that, that that worked and that made a massive difference. I don't understand all the nuances and all the rest of it as you're describing them, but I know that it made a huge difference. And uh, it's continued, you know, right to this day. Every day I go into work, I'm feeling better about it. All right, you might say, well, that might be just a psychological thing. It might be that, you you, you know, you, you, you've had that done and you think to yourself, well, it's made a difference. No, it's physically made a difference. If you could have, somebody could have come along with me who felt the energy before, walked alongside me and walked in on that first visit to work after the clearing, and they could have experienced it as well. It was that obvious, the difference. I haven't noticed any of that uh, waning at all, that positivity waning or, you know, that, that good feeling that I get when I go in. And I've noticed it in, uh, in our office ladies as well, you know. I've noticed the difference in her. She's a lot happier in herself. Seems more settled when she... I'm talking about when she's at work. She seems a lot happier in herself at work. A lot more settled and a lot chattier. And I think it's all down to the clearing that you did. Well, I know, in fact, I don't think. I know it is. 
as simple as that. The thing is, when people move into homes or they move into a new business premise, and I say this quite often on my podcast, is that you don't know what has been left behind by previous tenants. Now, you've had the building for such a long time. You know the type of energy that's been there, but we're talking historic here. Like we're talking old land, old trauma, old pain, old bloodshed. It's been there a very, very long time. And so when they build, Mm. you know, pubs and clubs and hospitals and hotels and business premises, people don't assume that there is any energetic issues within the land. So you just become used to the way something feels. Mm. And then someone like me comes along and gives it what I call an energetic spring clean. And they're like, I don't know what you've done, but it feels totally (laughs) different i different can't explain before. it no well i mean i would never i've all even before i met you i had this feeling that if i was ever to you know um buy a piece of land and build it build something on it or i was i was gonna move because we've lived in our same house previous to this one 30 odd years so i'm not a great mover i've only moved twice three times in my married life and so we're not big movers but i always thought that i would find somebody who would be able to clear me the property because it seemed obvious to me previous occupiers, events that have happened on the land, they leave something behind. And that can be detrimental to the people that come afterward. And so, you know, it just it just seems obvious. And, you know, it's like it's like when I, I've said to you before, we go visit stately homes and old buildings in the UK with loads of them. I'm now getting, I can, I can sense the energy now and, and I can protect myself from that energy. And, and other people also feel this energy, but they're, they're not aware of clearings and things like that. I can hear him talking, but it's creepy. It's cold in here. It's as we're going around these old properties, you know, looking at uh, looking at these historic houses. You hear people talking about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I would never now, knowing what I know now, I would never move to a new office, a new house, or anything without having it cleared. Definitely not. I'm getting more and more clients thinking exactly the way that you are. They've witnessed the energetic changes. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually doing a lot of work for psychologists who can be... Really? They're the most sceptical of sceptics. You know, they're very rational. They are. Very rational. If you can't see it, you can't prove it, it doesn't exist. And I do the work for them and they're like, I can't rationalise what you have done, but I feel the difference, my family feels the difference, my friends, my pets and so on. Mm. Yeah, definitely. We're feeling happier. Definitely. We're feeling more vibrant. Positive events and positive occurrences are starting to happen in our lives. Can we put it down to the energy clearing? And I'll say to people, it is part of who we are to need to be mm. energetically cleaned as well as cared for medically and looking after our mental health and our emotional health. We have to look after our energetic health as well. I just know it. I do this work every single day and I just see the improvements in people who have been stagnant and stuck and sick of life and nothing is happening for them. Nothing is going their way. Yeah, because you just don't know what people leave behind. No, yeah, definitely you can not. see the physical stuff they leave behind, but the energetic stuff can lay hidden. And the more, the more, the longer it's there, the more it attracts paranormal beings to come and feed off whatever is there. And then that creates that whole vicious cycle of the energetic beings are back, the people feel unwell. So it's really important. I have a lot of clients now, like I was saying before, that are just like, mm. no, nope, I'm not moving into that house until it's energetically clean first. Here's no another way. little example of a multi-story yeah. building. A friend of mine lives in Brighton in the UK, and he yeah. lives on the fourth floor. It's a little tiny two-bedroom. Like I know little... what you mean in Brighton. I know, I know, yeah, I know the type of properties in Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to hone in on just working on his tiny little <laughs> flat in a four-story <laughs> building Heck. that may have 100 flats in it or 100 units, yeah, whatever sure. you call them over yeah. there. Yeah. And after I did the cleansing and the clearing for him, his relationship with the neighbours improved. Like their behaviours were different. And they were going, oh, what, what's going on? But 
I feel good. You know, I'm sleeping better. And I didn't even clear their flat, but they're picking up the vibrational change. Mm. In Change this in his property. Flat yeah. is improving the flats above and the flats below and on either side. So imagine if we did yeah, that to the whole it. building. Wow. Think it of the difference. Wow. It's, it's life changing. It's absolutely life changing. Think about it. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Well, Dean, I would like to say a very hearty thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it to talk about your business clearing today. It's been wonderful. We always have the best chats. <laughs> well, thanks, Anna, and thanks for the clearing. Thanks for doing that. I should be thanking you, not thanking me. Thanks for doing the clearing and all the clearing work that you do for me personally and for my family. Uh, you know, we, re we really, really appreciate you. Thank you very much. And I have great pleasure in doing the work for you, I have to say. I love what I do, and I love seeing the positive changes and how it improves people's lives. Thanks again, Anna. Bye for now. Bye. So thank you for joining me today. And don't forget, if you want to share a paranormal experience just with myself, or you would like me to share one of your experiences through my podcast, please email me at spiritualbeing44 at gmail.com. You can do a voice recording or you can write out your experience and I will read it exactly as you have written. So in episode 30, we're exploring the appearance of First Nation elders in my Australian house and land clearing work, why they show themselves and what they have to say. And I'll be sharing my own experiences with these wonderful spiritual healers and helpers and how I work with them and their needs in the process of clearing detrimental energetic imprints from within their land. And for information on paranormal house clearing, you can visit my website, Spiritual Being. You will find the address in the description box. And I look forward to sharing this spooky space again with you next week. And remember, life is perfectly paranormal.